That's why I'm sitting here so I don't forget. Oh, it'll be my name. That's a good way to remember. Excuse me. Are we all together now? Turned on. Session, chair. Thank you. Um, Director McCormick is away at this point in time with Lee. And so I will be chairing today's Committee of the Whole. And uh, Director Hollow is sitting in place for Director McCormick. And we are holding this meeting on the traditional territory, the Klaaman Nation. And I'd like to call us to order. And I'd like to start by uh, moving the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Director Gisborne, seconded by uh, Director Lennox. All in favor? Unanimous. That brings us to um, the adoption of the minutes. If we had a motion for that, I could. So moved. Moved by same two. Same two. Characters. Director yeah. Gisborne, Director Lennox. Any comments, errors, omissions? Being hearing none, all in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> that brings us to 6.1 correspondence. What's the pleasure of the board? Director Lennox. Uh, sorry, Chair. I, I know we typically just uh, accept the correspondence. I just wanted to make a motion to do that. A point on one of the submissions. Do I have to wait until business arising from correspondence? Mm -hmm. I guess what I could do is ask: Is there any business arising right. from correspondence? Right. Yes, that, uh, that that would have been the right way to do it. Uh, so, Director Lennox. Yeah. Just you... just quickly, a uh, uh, six point one there. Um, it's obvious uh, from the correspondence uh, the impact that our um, our work uh, endorsing and then our staff's work doing the work to uh, improve accessibility in the region is well received and um, you know letters like this uh, it's easy to just kind of accept them and move past but uh, these things that we're doing are, are really impacting people for the positive in the community and I you know my experience with people with the, uh, mobility issues um, using these facilities. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge this lady from the Hodgins and the um, work that our staff's doing out there. It is important and it's being noticed. Thank you. Thank you. Director Brandon? Uh, no, I was just saying we usually just, I retract my statement. <laughs> We've already done everything that needed to happen. Well, I don't really need a motion. We're, we're uh, just accepting the correspondence six, one, two, and three. And the business arising has already been. Is there any other business arising from the correspondence? Seeing, hearing none, we'll move along to reports. That brings us to 8.1 strategic plan progress report. A move. Recommendation. So I have uh, Director Gisborne moving the recommendation, Director Paul seconding that. Anybody wish to speak to that? Director Brenner. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I just have one question for staff. Just reading through the progress report reminded me that I heard that the mobile dishwashing station was not functional right now. And I was wondering if there's any new information on it. We are in I imagine local groups would like to use it. Mr. Schwab. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Manager Schwab. Uh, through the chair, yes, there there were some issues with the, the mobile dishwasher. Uh, the Let's Talk Trash team, I believe, has has them resolved. Um, they have a replacement. We were we were just sort of passing a few a few hurdles just to, to get that in place, but Abby from the Let's Talk Trash team I, I believe has that solved.
Go ahead, um, Abby. I see Mr. McLennan on the screen. Thank you, through the chair. Um, we've sourced some funding through First Credit Union for a secondhand mobile dishwashing trailer that I believe has fallen through. Um, so we're currently still without a dishwasher and we're gonna be trying to source one through an auction site. Um, but if we need to purchase a new one, we have a, a larger grant application in through First Credit Union, but um, that is not yet approved for the higher price tag unit. I guess just as a follow up, if I may. Um, follow up. Uh, just what kind of a time frame do we have on either the grant application or the auction, or you know, will this be available for the festivals this summer for our zero waste program? Yeah, uh, through the chair. The one we had found secondhand in Squamish, we were ready to get um, in April, but it seemed like that one, we weren't guaranteed it was functional and we didn't want to purchase it and bring it all the way back to Powell River to then hook it up and find out that it was, it was not working and the seller wasn't able to guarantee that. So right now our application forms for zero waste event supplies are listing the mobile dishwashing trailer is not available. We're trying to find something for event season, but um, right now we don't have anything. Richard Lennox? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, the strat plan progress report is always educational for me. And I'm, I think my question is just about when the items are updated and just looking at a few things. Maybe I'm um, just misinterpreting how it's reported. Um, we use uh, 31 of 77 as an example of um, the Community Resiliency Investment Program uh, funding uh, for the Fire Smart uh, program. And my understanding was that that uh, was submitted in December of last year and, and was approved. So I'm just wondering, seeing 7% of 100, I just thought, is that actually, are we only 7% of the way there as far as all of those? Um, Commitments that we made is that is that why we score it that low? Maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. Um, That's yeah, go ahead. Okay. See the chair. It depends on what the parent is of okay. of the uh, item, and it, if it's the main parent, then it takes all of the things underneath that and then so sometimes you don't get all those you may be completed one of those projects and yet the whole project doesn't get the same score okay. so that's weighted yeah thank you that's why we're seeing some some of the scores we've got the action mostly done or half done and we have to get there fully yeah thank you thank you chair uh, director hollow uh, yes on the uh, page 18 of the report page 34 of the package I noticed that the due date on the New Horizons for Seniors grant application was 2020. Um, is this something that gets updated or relooked at and into the next report, or should it be brought back to the committee? I guess Turk in this case. Um, Hi, your manager of uh, financial okay. services, Linda Greenan. He's muted. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Chair. Through the Chair. Um, yes, this project hasn't been updated for some time. It's been put on hold, and so that's, it's been marked as 50% complete. Um, and we had been waiting for further information from the Tech State Recreation Commission on the design size and estimated construction costs. Um, it hasn't been revisited. So yes, it might be something that, um, you know, has to be brought to the attention of the Recreation Commission again to see if they're still, you know, still interested in pursuing that. Thank you. Any other uh, Director Fall? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, one comment and one question for uh, probably through the Chair to Patrick, to Mr. Devereaux, Manager 
operations. The uh, item on it's on page 36. They're both on page 36 of either 32 of the report. And the first one is uh, the, the, the island the bridge bridge up near the old landfill. Uh, the board approved some funding at you know $150, and at our last waste management committee advisory committee, the uh, the waste manager stated that he had organized a cleanup. So mid March, a cleanup was up there. Four people. Additional people, volunteers showed up there and they spent a few hours cleaning things up, got a truckload of garbage and have a few, what do you say, a few tires and uh, uh, even a, a washing machine, some appliances that he'll go get. So the landfill site, which has been capped, looks beautiful. It's got grass growing on it. It's really done a beautiful job, but this was to clean up garbage that had been you know, dispersed in the forest over the years. And so that's really nice to see that this is this additional periphery um, peripheral cleanup will make the landfill site, the old landfill site, uh, much uh, nicer. The question I have is is just above it, which is related to the uh, the, the potential acquisition of Spring Bay Park. And I, I just the the board asked the staff to send a letter to request information from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. And I assume the answer may be that we're still just waiting. But I just wanted to just because it's we we. we uh, I get asked this question from members of the Lesquiti Island Nature Conservancy. So I'll take this opportunity to see if through the chair, there's been any additional movement since 2022 on this. Chair Devereaux? Yes, Chair. Um, I We are waiting is the answer. <laughs> I, I have contacted the ministry again. I've even tried a few back channels through uh, Coquitlam to uh, see if we could get some action because it's at, of course, the branch in Nanaimo. Um, we're continuing to work on this, but uh, they move at their own pace. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And I, yeah, their their priorities are not necessarily our priorities, probably won't, aren't our priorities, but uh, thank you for the update. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Comments? Um, does anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'm going to second it. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> uh, looks unanimous. Yeah. Um, 8.2 uh, Emergency Solid Waste Disposal Planning. And the recommendation? Second. Uh, Director Paul moved, seconded by Director Bradner. Anybody have anything to say? Questions? Seeing none, call the oh. question. Director Paul. Oh, I'm, I'm Director Paul. Thank you. Just a brief comment. The report says, and I don't have it right here, but it says uh, there may be additional uh, costs. And uh, we have a, Liski has, or an, the regional district does have an agreement with the Cedar landfill with regional district of Nanaimo. And we're not using it right now. That was the old barge service. But the, the costs there, if I'm not for, uh, mistaken, were around 20% or 20% above the regular tipping fee. So we, we can kind of expect something like that, which this is for emergency. So ideally we won't be needing to use this arrangement, but but there, you know, I guess to uh, get other regional boards to agree to do this, they're going to put a premium on uh, on accepting possibly waste from outside the regional district. Yeah. Thank you. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Looks unanimous. Uh, 8.3 Myrtle Pond Water System Water Conservation Box. So moved. Seconded. Moved by Director Gisborne, seconded by Director Lennox. Can I get someone to speak? Director Gisborne? I'd love to. Myrtle Pond Water System, it's in Area B, as I'm sure we're all aware. Um, the signage and bulletin boards at mailboxes, I've found in the past to be excellent ways to get the community to you know, see what's going on. Um, I guess I got two questions. Uh, the first question is, when these signs go up, will it be only for the water system to be able to put information there or will the community members be able to you know put up like lost pets or things like that because i know some other community bulletin boards that are operated by water improvement districts and they're kind of open for other people to put stuff up but of course if there's a water advisory or something like that we can put ours up over top because that's most important so that's my first question and i'll, I'll wait to 
here, Mark. <laughs> I see uh, Mr. Devereaux is on screen. Um, you have an answer for us. Uh, through the chair, yes, I do have an answer. Um, the primary uh, uh, purpose of the signs, of course, is to communicate the phase of which water conservation is in during the summer drought. But they will have a communication um, portion that the community can use as a bulletin board and uh, we will clean up and remove old uh, you know, messages, that kind of stuff. Uh, as time goes on. Wonderful. Um, and then uh, my next question uh, is, can we use community works funds uh, for these signs? It's, it's not a huge cost value, um, but I think this, this sounds like something community works funds could be used for. It's like two, three grand. And if we can use it, do we need a motion to allocate community works funds towards these signs? Uh uh, Linda, Ms. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I can't remember the specific wording, but there was a um, circular that came out just recently advising that, from the Ministry advising that community works are not intended to be used for small, you know, very small one-off projects, that they're intended to be used for um, like larger infrastructure types of projects. So um, I would like to look into that a bit further um, if possible. Okay, yeah, that, that answers uh, my question because yeah, if we're only doing three signs and it's a couple of grand, then maybe we can't do community works funds for that project, but you know, maybe in the future we could look at you know, widespread you know, signage for you know notifications and who knows, maybe that could actually be possible. Um, and then I guess my very last kick at the can is we have in our strategic progress, strategic plan progress report that we just had, uh, that we're looking to do some public engagement about the Myrtle Pond water system, potentially expanding its boundary. And I see that they're going to start advertising, I think, in, in June and potential public meetings in September. And I'm just wondering, what is the timeline we're looking at getting these boards up and whether they could be used to, you know, help get that engagement out you know, rather than having to send mail to each individual household. So, just curious about the timeline. Yes, Chair, if I may, um, through the Chair, the, the timeline we are hoping is to get these signs in before the summer drought. So uh, July 1st is uh, kind of our timeline. Uh, can't guarantee that because of crew complement, but uh, that's uh, that's what we're aiming for. Wonderful, all great answers. Thumbs up from me for the questions. Thank you, Chair. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? All in favor, none opposed, see none. Uh, that brings us to the shelter point park. In session. I'd like to move that. Uh, moved by Director Hollow, seconded by Director Bradner. Uh, anybody have anything they'd like to speak to on this motion? Director Hollow? Yes. In session is a really popular with not only campers, but locals. And I like the option of uh, a food truck, uh, would be well welcomed and received. And my question is uh, for the food truck, does that go to tender as soon as possible for possibility for this season? And would it be advertised on uh, Facebook, uh, Texada message board to let the public know that there is a tender out and the pos uh, acceptance? And for the repurpose, I have two questions. And the repurpose question would be, uh, an idea was the cabin uh, idea for uh, to use a cabin, the building as a cabin, and um, is that as a handicap option um, considered for that cabin? Mr. Devereaux? Yes, Chair. Um, we would advertise the food truck uh, more or less immediately um, once the board approved it at the end of May. Uh, so we're looking at probably advertisement sometime uh, through June, hopefully have something in place for the July, August season. Um, 
We have had past interest from folks um, for um, putting a food truck at Shelter Point. So we anticipate that we will get a response to any kind of request. The second uh, question about uh, the handicapped uh, uh, configuration for the cabin. It is one level. Um, I do not have the exact measurements for the washroom in the cabin though. And uh, that would have to be assessed if, if it meets CSA standards. Um, we may not be able to say it is uh, um, fully accessible, um, but it being a uh, one level, level entry uh, and with the modifications of the bathroom, we'll get very close, um, but I can't guarantee uh, full um, designation as I don't have the exact measurements of the washroom yet. Thank you very much. Dr. Doug? Yeah, and I'm interesting what might be done with the building, but I think if we we're going to be spending any money on the building, as the report said, it would likely come as part of the 2024 budget. And we should have a discussion on how much it was going to cost and what re revenue it might bring in at that time. Otherwise, I'm in support of the motion. Director Fall. Uh, thank you, Chair. I have a question through the Chair, if I might, to Mr. Devereaux. And it regards the, the um, the building too, and I, and I, you know, I think I look forward to, to discussions on on this item in the future. But I guess for right and that right now, if this motion passes and the concession moves to a food truck, which would be at least something there uh, that would be useful, what would are there things that need to be done right away? Or is there a you know are you know there's fryers in there and there's various bits of equipment and so on? Do there are there is it a, is it a fairly involved process to at least um, you know put it in a state where where we can you know, where it can sit for a while until a decision's made and a budget's put in place to do any renovations that might need to happen. Mr. Devereaux? Yes, Chair, if I may. Um, the concession closes every year. It is only open seasonally. So the building is always put into a, a state of hibernation, if, if I may, uh, over the winter season. And that's how it sits. Um, there's no change in how we operate really. And we've always put a, a budget in for uh, minor maintenance and upkeep for that building. So uh, I don't see any budget restraints or, or uh, any adverse conditions by keeping it closed. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Any other questions on it? Uh, I'll call the question, all in favor? Any opposed? Unanimous. That brings us to 8.5 of flowers inside the mausoleum. Um, does anybody wish to make a motion? I'd like to insert option four into this motion and move it. So do I have a seconder? Um, Director Brenner seconded the motion. And go ahead, Director Lennox. Yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, staff's report on this issue and uh, it's been very descriptive of some of the safety concerns that are in place and uh, how many users and, and sort of the, the, um, the space limitations mm -hmm. and such. Um, you know, I've thought a lot about it, and I, I think that option four, having a rolling um, shelf or, or container uh, is a reasonable cost for one, and uh, it also gives options when uh, any of those safety concerns um, arise. And, you know, uh, in, in the safety world, you eliminate the hazards. So if you have a group that's uh, larger and you're concerned about uh, mobility issues and Tripping hazards, then then that item could be moved to a safe location. So um, you know, I'd like to to provide something for folks that uh, obviously have a need, um, but that's reasonable. That's why I'm in support of the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Do I remember um, when the gentleman brought as a delegation this concern to the board? Really happy we're moving forward with options. 
And my question is, are we going to be communicating back to the gentleman that brought this to our attention uh, when we've uh, decided on what to do about it? Uh, I guess that would be Mr. Devereaux. Yes, Chair, if I may. Um, I've been in uh, contact with Mr. Villani uh, quite regularly since uh, the last few months. And uh, once the board passes uh, this in the end of May, I will let him know the results. Thank you. Um, seeing no other raised hands, uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none, that's unanimous. And that brings us to new business, 9.1 organic diversion on Texada Island, and we have that listed as Director McCormick, so we'll have Director O'Hallo speak to that. Second. Mm -hmm. uh, Director Lennox seconded mm -hmm. uh, from it. I had my notes out. <laughs> um, this is asking for a report. We don't have an established organics diversion on Texada Island. Right now, people either use their own compost or throw it in the bush. Throwing it in the bush adds to other garbage added into the bush, and we really need to get in at the times. We want to be part of the solution. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Comments, questions, concerns? All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none, that's unanimous. Uh, 9.2 We Lake Provincial Inspection Report, Director Gisborne. So moved. Um, Seconded by Director Lennox. Comment? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if folks around the table have seen some of the news articles that are coming out about, uh, you know, these accusations about what's going on down in Lois Lake, you know, with their fish farm and all these compliance issues and, you know, genetics. And I'm looking at it going, okay, you know, we as an organization, we're not really getting into you know, the genetics and all these other kind of aspects, those are you know, provincial and federal jurisdictions. But Area B and Area C official community plans uh, reference a 2009 water study for potential future growth and development south of town. And in that study, it identifies Lois Lake as one of the main sources of water for south of town. And if there is you know, what is being reported in the news as you know significant you know, pollution into the lake, I think that's something that we've got to take very seriously and be concerned about. And this motion isn't saying that we, we really do any action. It's more of, if we get the report that is being referenced in the news and we can kind of get more information and, and proceed from there. Uh, I'm not suggesting mm -hmm. we take any action at this time. It's just, I want to find out more information because if it is impacting, uh, you know, potential future potable water south of town, we put a lot of money on that study. 2009, and I'd like to know more about what's going on. So that's what the request is for. Yeah, I'd like to support uh, this recommendation. Uh, I've come to to be aware that uh, this particular operation has new ownership, so it might be a good time to just establish a new relationship, even though it's uh, federal. You know, aquaculture is a federal uh, thing. Uh, we, you know, I've been paying attention to the local. Uh, uh, open pen uh, fish farming issue. It is morphed into understanding of, pen, you know, fish farming in lakes. And so, you know, having that awareness um, as a stakeholder, we're being asked for input as stakeholders in, in these meetings. So I think this is another way for us to have the most pertinent information and be aware of what's happening in our areas. So I support the motion. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just have a question. I, I think it's a reasonable thing to do, given uh, the information that we have. It's just a question uh, through the Chair or, or to the Chair. If we, when we have such a motion like this, where we're essentially asking the province for a report, I was just curious to know how, where does it show up? Does it show up as an FYI to an agenda or does it show up as an agenda item that with, with no recommendation, you know, and, and open, you know, so, you know, because there wouldn't be a staff recommendation other than to receive it. So I'm just curious to know how we, what happens with such requests. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you, through the chair. Um, likely it would be value weighted when we received it. It would 
likely come through uh, a matter of correspondence and th then it may appear under correspondence. Um, but it also could have, you know, we do put things under FYI if there's no action required. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Richard Gisborne? Yeah, uh, I would be happy with it showing up as correspondence because um, it's something that we're saying, hey, we want to see. And then the board at the time can either, you know, have business arriving from correspondence and then we can take the next step where we might look at the report. And who knows, maybe by the time we get the report, the maybe the issue is resolved. But <laughs> and then that way, if we want to take further action, we can just. So I'm happy with correspondence. Any other all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none, unanimous. Um, that brings us to question period. Do we have questions online? Or with the press? Uh, thank you, Chair. I don't have any questions this afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, anybody else on present? Let's see, do we have anyone online? No? No. Okay. Uh, anyone in the gallery with questions? Councillor Pong, no? No, thanks. Right. Um, so that brings us to a motion for an in camera session. Could I have someone, please? Our expert. Go ahead, <laughs> Director Gil. I move that the committee move in camera. The meeting be closed to the public on the grounds that the subject matter to be considered relates to matters covered by the community charter under section 91C, labor relations or other employee relations. I, the receipt of advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. M, a matter that under another enactment is such that the public may be excluded from the meeting and the consideration of whether a committee meeting should be closed under provision of this subsection or subsection two. Or two, a part of a meeting must be Close to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to one or more of the following. D, the consideration of information received and held in confidence relating to negotiations between the regional district and a provincial government or the federal government or both or between a provincial government or the federal government or both and a third party. Dr. Lennox is second for us. Um, any comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Being none, unanimous. We are going to go in camera. In camera.
hello, welcome back. Um, we are in the other hall. We have uh, decided to move a, a new item, a new business item to the open meeting. It is entitled Community to Community, Community E3 Forums. And um, I'm opening up that topic now. Um, I have a motion to move, but I just sent them right in the corporate officer. So, what I'm going to ask, since it wasn't published for them, is if you put the shock of on the board and we can read it out so that everybody can hear it. Okay. Yeah, I can speak in the note so that everyone can hear. I'll, I move that the committee recommend the board establish a select committee for the purposes of regional collaboration and reconciliation with all three communities, Guaman Nation, City of Powell River, and the QRD electoral areas, and that the committee be open to all elected representatives of those three communities, and that staff be directed to draft a terms of reference, and that staff inquire about grants from senior level government to support the work of the committee. Do we get a secondary or we can talk to? Um, the topic of the C3 is something that's been bounced around in this community. There's been a lot of good work that's happened with C3 over the years. We have run into challenges, and I think the challenges come down to structure. We, in the past, would have meetings that we didn't really know whether they were closed or whether they were open or whether they were actually even meetings, and that meant that we have all these people coming in, and we don't necessarily know which, like, where, where we sit on it. Some would think, well, I don't say anything about it, and others would turn around and tell the press. And we, as an organization, a regional district, with the name Cathet, means working together. We represent a broader regional body. And I think when we talk about C3, we're talking about bringing everyone to the table. This motion of establishing a select committee means that we, the regional district, set the table and we bring everyone together and we can have all elected representatives of both the city, the Nation and the regional district and we can then direct our staff to establish the terms of reference for what works with all parties. And there is grant funding that I've heard at C3, uh, sorry, at AVICC to support the work of reconciliation discussions. And I believe that with this committee, we can then all get on the same page as to what our expectations are. And I believe those terms of reference will be based on the input from City of Power River and Flamin Nation, so that when we come together, we have some clear structure and clear expectations, and we work together as one entity when we start discussing this. So I'd like to hear what other members of the committee have to say. Met Director Doubt, followed by Director Hall. So, we've got some memory of the <laughs> I just read a few minutes ago. Uh, but I think it's positive to get the C3 community to community to community relationship back on track where we are able to be together. I would like the terms of reference to include comments that I'm taking from uh, a report uh, by the regional district staff. And one is that we could have terms of reference to talk about meetings being open to the public the exception of an opportunity to close meetings under Section 91M, for example, of the community charter, or for uh, items under other legislation that may apply nationally to uh, make sure that we're not disclosing anything harmful to the interests of Indigenous people. I think under those two opportunities to go into a closed meeting where the public would be excluded, we have an opportunity to have those meetings open to the public. I think if we were to do that, if we were to set a terms of reference, we would be in a groundbreaking position. We could write those down. We could talk to the Minister of Municipal Affairs, to the UBCM. We could say, we've been able to work out something that we think is appropriate, deals with the ability to keep things in private where they need to be, where they avoid harm to others. 
and to make it as open to the public as possible. So with those uh, reservations for what I think the terms of reference need to include, I would support this motion. Thank you, Paul. Completely concur. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, I... I think the, the idea here is good, but I do have one concern, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to articulate it, because I think the idea of you know, finding a solution, and I, I appreciate you know, kind of trying to put forward a solution here, and my concern is that the intent of the C3 is that we're a partnership of equals, there's no senior level, the C3, we're all equals, and the, the part I have a bit of concern is that we say to the rest that we're creating a select committee and you can be part of it. We're basically saying it's not the C3, it's the QRD C3. And it puts us kind of, it, we're, we're sort of, it's a little bit colonial or, or something where we're we're kind of providing that structure. And I can understand that it, it, it may help us resolve some of our issues, but I have a little bit of a hesitation of putting such a thing forward if we haven't talked about it uh, first with the other partners. Sure, maybe my concerns are unfounded, but I, I would like to first start with a handshake, we'll start it back up again, and, and you know, I think the idea might be good, but I would, I would actually be fully in support of like the media. The new the development, and ideally the city of Powell River as well, were in favor of this before we go down a path of, of kind of trying to say we have a solution, um, and then you have to adhere to that solution. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're all on the same page as far as intent, and we all feel that it's it's time to reinvigorate this attempt to to bring us together. Working together is definitely what we're trying to do. Uh, one of the things that we uh, you know, we spend some time on at ABICC was this topic and learning about how different levels of government operate and parameters they're under. Um, and I don't have the fellow's name, but it was the government liaison that spoke quite eloquently. You know, his name literally offered to, to help us and when one of our uh, delegation uh, made comment on one of the motions on the floor um, the person from the provincial government literally said I, I know Tlaam Nation I work with them they're ready to help and so we need to engage that help because really all those partners that have been working together over the years we can bring them together to get to the good terms of reference to understand what Tlaaman's position is and their, and their concerns and the city. I think I think we're aiming in the right direction, um, but we just need to bring all those players together. So I suggest we reach out um, as part of this effort uh, to to the the ministry and the representative to to help us uh, get to where we're we're aiming here. Director Brown. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's interesting hearing what everybody has to say. I appreciate a lot of the comments that have been made. I guess when I look at this C3, it's I, I see it as it's a it's identified as a forum first off, and I see it as a more informal get together of the three governments. Um, I'm not sure we that it's necessary to to get too deep into the weeds on it. I think it's just an opportunity for three governments to get together and have an informal discussion of topics that are familiar to all three groups. I also see it as being a challenge to limit that to just three persons per um, government. How are we gonna choose those three persons? Kind of a feeling that everybody's gonna be wanting to get involved with that. And do we impose those limitations on the other governments as well? I think for right now, I'm I'm more inclined to go with the original recommendation that just says reinstate the C3 forums in a manner that satisfies the First Nation partners. But I, I certainly see the value in starting these up again. But it, it's a non-decision making body. It's very beneficial to all the governments involved to the relationship and higher levels of government are encouraging us to do this. So anyway, this is my two cents right now. Thank you. So I'm just gonna take this opportunity to say something and, um, and then I'll get to you, Director Gisborne. Um, so I'm actually uh, not in favor of the motion just because it does assume the QRD is taking the lead in structure. And I think it's inappropriate for us to um, 
do that. Um, I support what Director Bradner and Director Fall are both saying, and, and that we originally had a forum that was never intended to further business or make decisions of any kind. They weren't considered business meetings. They were uh, gatherings of the three governments to share information. And um, we run into uh, some problems in the communities when, when the Kalaman are saying we would really rather not have them be open at this time. It, you know, the level of angst in the community was up due to um, conversations that were happening outside of the C3 forum about topics raised at the C3 forum. So um, I'm in favor of getting those C3 meetings back on track. Uh, I don't know how they can proceed uh, to make it all parties happy, but I think we need to start talking about it. And I don't, I don't really support the regional district taking the bull and saying, okay, well, we're going to structure it and create a committee and invite people to participate. I think that's not really the fly. But um, I do, I do want us to move forward with C3 meetings. And so I would vote against this particular motion in favor of the original motion that was on on the package. Uh, Director, yes, go Hey, um, just to clarify a few things. Um, since we've come out into the public session, the public doesn't actually see what the original motion is. Right now, this is the only mission, uh, motion that's been made public. Um, this motion does not limit the number of elected representatives that can attend. It is open to all elected representatives, not just three from each. This, this allows us to be open to all. The other challenge that we've heard is if Tlaman would like to have a discussion and have it closed, if we're not having a meeting, then there's no uh, way to actually make sure that what is discussed stays closed. Because if we have a gathering and we talk about things, there's nothing that really restricts us from say going out and saying, well, this is what was discussed. If we do have a committee and the committee chooses to have a closed discussion on an item, then my understanding is that we are then all essentially bound to keep it closed. The motion before us is that we work with Plaman, the regional district electoral areas, which is us, and the greater regional district and the city of Power to come up with those terms of reference and to set the table. It is not to say we have the solution. It just to me seems like the regional district, which has that broader regional collaboration. As I understand it, regional districts have the ability to have a seat for treated First Nations to join. Uh, municipalities don't have that ability. Uh, John Jack from AVICC is the chair of the Alberni Clayacot Regional District and represents a Treaty First Nation at that regional district. And, you know, he, he spoke very eloquently. And this item before us, I, I don't know if it's the silver bullet or if it's the perfect solution, but I think it is one option that we could actually offer to say, look, this is this is what we can do. And that way we can hopefully meet some of those concerns and if we want to have a closed discussion and and the, our friends and neighbors also want to have a closed discussion and when we do go closed that it stays closed and when we do want to have a public discussion it is in a public discussion and this is something that the terms of reference i think should be as director doubt very eloquently said, and I'm, I don't even know how to say it as eloquently as he did, so I'm not going to try, but I think it should take into account the input from all three parties, and that this can be a starting place, and maybe something else comes along, but I think that the original C3, we were running into some challenges where people were coming to those meetings with different expectations as to how it was functioning, and as we know in this community, the rumor mill can just run wild. So I think this can help us maybe find some common ground. So I'm in support. And I, Our CAO, Al Radke, had something to contribute. 
Uh, th thanks. Through the chair, I had the opportunity to speak with my colleague at uh, Tlaman earlier this week, and uh, I just want to draw your attention to the, because their notion that they want to have private meetings, not in-camera meetings. And meaning private being drawn from company or observation. I think it's because they feel that's the only way what we right now perhaps they can help to control and we can help to promote it is found in the uh, United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. And that is, they should be free from discrimination of any kind. And if a private meeting is held with just those participants there in that forum, then that could potentially be the method or the medium to do such. I also want to just remind you too that these forums have been encouraged for a number of years now. And as a pointed out in, in the report, there is a government document addressing these forums. And they state that they can be casual or formal. And they can be engaging or the decision of all the parties must be made together if you want to bring in the media, et cetera, et cetera. The government is promoting these meetings as casual or formal and the confidentiality, et cetera. So I think we've already got their support. It's now up to the board to determine where they want to go with this. And I think it all hinges on the idea of private, not in camera. Private still means it. No, nobody is there, but you can talk about things. And if there was something specifically said for non-disclosure, then you know you don't talk about that. And the last thing I want to point out too is that the AVICC, and it's been mentioned that John Jack was there on the uh, breakout session. He said that the European colonial settlers had to go more than halfway in doing it more than half the time. And you guys, I'll leave it to the board to determine what that means in your own realms. Mr. Doe. So to me, and it, there's, there's probably 300 ways we can come to a decision not to do anything. We can, uh, I'm, I'm serious about that. There's a whole bunch of objections that we can throw up. Let's say it's impossible to do this. That's not hard to do. The hard part, in my view, is to work out a way to actually come together and to work together on finding a solution. No one of the three groups that we're talking about are going to make a decision by themselves that they're not going to impose on anybody else. It's going to require an agreement. It's going to require a give and take. It's going to require a back and forth discussion to get that. What's needed is some place to begin to reach out. And whatever language you use, whether you use the motion that's on the floor now or a similar one that could be moved later, it's got to start with, we're going to reach out to the Laman Nation and the city and see if we can, the three groups can come up with a way to meet together. And you know, having an ability to do that in public, I think is a really good idea because decisions that are made by local governments are going to eventually be put into action if anything is ever put into action. Sometimes we just talk about things for years, but if we want to put it into action, we're going to have to get the public involved and they're going to have to know it's right. And they're going to have to want to know why things are being done, who asked for it, why do they want it. And bringing the public along is an important step in what we do in local governments. I think we need to be respectful. I have an opportunity. If people want to speak in private, then they can do that. If we have some guidelines about when that discussion can happen in private. I, th I think it's kind of risky to say we'll have a discussion and some of it, some of it will be behind closed doors, but it's probably okay if you say what you what went on there because somebody is going to say something that somebody else doesn't agree with at some point. No recordings, no information. So I, I think it's kind of tricky. 
I would like to see a set of uh, terms of reference that allows meetings to be in public, also allows them to be held in private, call it in camera or call it where, whatever you want, where people agree not to disclose the discussions outside of the meeting. And uh, I don't see any problem about having something like that. And I think being able to explain to people what the terms of reference are and how the meetings will go will help those people who are in local governments, and I mean municipal governments like the regional district and the city, explain the function, how it's going on, what requests, where requests are coming from, and what the reasoning for the request is. And uh, I'm all behind reaching out and trying to find a solution that satisfies, yes, satisfies the First Nations partners, but also satisfies the city and the regional district. You can't have a decent relationship unless everybody's satisfied with it. That's the, just the truth. And I want to get back to where we were before. We're not there right now. We haven't met for a long time. We need to find a way to get to C3 operating again. And uh, I hope we can do it. I think there is actually some common ground here to try. Director Paul. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd just like to follow up on something that Director Doat just said, which is that we're not going to be able to meet uh, properly with a C3 unless everyone's satisfied, unless all three parties are satisfied. And I think we all are behind the concept of reinstating C3. I don't. I think that's really what we're trying to get at and what we're trying to struggle with. I think it would be far better to work together through the C3 to work out and have, you know, even on, as a topic of a first meeting, um, to talk about meeting issues and help try to find that way to satisfy everyone. I think if the risk I see of the motion before us is if we if we put forward a solution that we say we have a solution and we justify why we're the, the broader government or why we're the ones that needs to set the table, the risk is uh, the Tlatman may just say, no, I'm not joining your committee. We're a nation and, you know, we're, we're a, a sovereign nation. We're, we're not, we're not smaller we're actually bigger in some senses so i think that if if we knew that that would be a solution that they would be open to i would be very happy to go forward with it but i think proposing it and putting it forward if if the talatman turned around and said no we don't like that solution and we you haven't talked to us about it you did not ask us whether that would satisfy our concerns then we're actually worse off than we are now we do know one thing what we do know is that despite the the concerns that have been raised around the C3s. We do know that all that all three parties, and in particular the Tlatman, were willing to meet in that forum. So we do know that that's a forum, that's a that's a, a format in which the Tlatman are willing to meet because they have in the past, at least unless they've changed their mind. So I think starting back there saying we want to reinstate community, 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 and then, you know, right off the bat, we can, you know, first topic can be why haven't we been meeting and let's start figuring out our concerns and get understanding and offer solutions and then maybe um, maybe you know maybe some solution like this one could come out of it but I can't be in favor of moving forward with something without hearing from the other two partners that seems like trying to uh, tell them what the solution is instead of ask thank you director Banner thanks chair uh, I just want to reiterate for <clears throat> for those who may be paying attention online that the, the c3 forum is not a a decision-making body in any way. We get together to talk about topics that are of mutual interest for the three groups or two of the three groups or whatever it might be. And then everything is brought back to the board tables for the three governments and discussed in an appropriate fashion, either in a closed meeting or an open meeting, depending on what the subject matter may be. So it's just a matter of getting together to chat about topics of similar interest. It's no decisions being made at that point. Thank you. Um, uh, CAO uh, Radke, did you have any comments around uh, uh, Director Fall's thoughts that we were still in the same place or that we have new information that maybe, ch I think Kalman has told us they do not want to meet the same way they did before. Is that correct? Um, through the chair, I, I think what Kalman is saying is the forum is okay that they want to meet in private. Okay. Um, so 
I'm in favor of defeating this motion and making a more general motion that we should move forward to getting our C3 back on track and work with the partners to figure out how to do that. I'm not, I think this motion is not the way to do that. Um, I'd like to call the question unless someone else has something to say. I have put an amendment forward to the corporate officer, but um, Director Hollow has not yet spoken, so I will um, wait until Director Hollow speaks and then I will put forward my amendment. I like your question, the way you were wording your motion, um, Chair, and um, it seems it's a very complicated matter that we're trying to oversimplify and make a solution right here with just us. And I really think the thing is to reach out and say, we want to, we want to work and that's it. And then let the other parties come forward and say, okay, this is how we're gonna do it. I know it's complicated because it's private versus public versus in camera, but a simplified, just let's get started, I think would alleviate all the complexity of adding in all the stipulations. We have to have a terms of reference and even that we just get to recommend as the board that we reinstate um, because it might not be that that we all want um, on both sides. So simple, let's just get the ball rolling simply without putting too much onuses on a detailed terms of reference, et cetera. So I like what what you were uh, what you were getting at your proposal. Thank you. Um, I'll put forward an amendment. Is it simpler to to amend the current motion or just to defeat it and put up a simpler motion? to amend the current motion because it's it's not a huge change to the motion. Um, it is an including that after terms of reference, so that it would read that staff be directed to draft a term of reference in collaboration and input with Tuolumne Nation and the City of Powell River. That is my amendment that I'm putting forward. And if I get a second, I'll speak into it briefly. Second by Lennox. Um, I hear everyone around the table and I completely agree. We, all three groups, all three communities have to actually work together in order to make it work. If Palama Nation doesn't like our terms of reference, if like they are in many ways above local government, they are not on the same playing field as local governments, which we're children of the province. What is being proposed is my attempt or our board's attempt, our group's attempt to say, you know, you're right, more than halfway, more than half the time. And this is us as a board saying, we're going to put in some effort. We're going to put in some staff time. We're going to reach direct our staff to reach out to you and get the input on what, what would Columbia Nation and what would the city of Power like to have for their terms of reference? Because I don't want to prescribe what the terms of reference are. I think all three groups need to come up with that. And maybe we do have a C3 meeting before we even establish such a committee and we decide what our terms of reference are. But I see that in the past we've had some challenges, but this amendment is specifically to clarify that our staff would be directed to draft the terms of reference and get the input from the other two communities. And that is Tlaman Nation and the City of Power River, because if Tlaman Nation doesn't like the terms of reference that that are being developed, then it, it won't be. Director Doubt's absolutely right, it won't work. We need to work together. And therefore, I hope the board at least approves the amendment, even if they don't like the main motion, <laughs> because that will then help the main motion become more collaborative and direct our staff to get that input. And yeah, I, I hope we support the amendment. Okay, so the amendment that's properly on the table at this point in time should get displayed so that people can see what it is we're trying to deal with, I think, before we comment on it. Are we able to do that, Ms. Jones? Yes, thank you, Chair. So um, it's in red here, but the, amend the amendment would be that the motion be amended to insert. Um, but, yeah. but when you see this... this we'll be dealing with the whether we're going to amend or not. Amend. So this um, is how the... Amendment. Right. So, does anybody have any comments on this motion to amend the the main motion, as is written in red on the screen? 
Oh, it should be uh, with, uh, in collaboration. Uh, oh, never mind, sorry. <laughs> you, did, you did great. <laughs> I think that works. I'm not sure I try to I'm just saying, at this point, asking the staff to direct a terms of reference from our point of view sounds like we're leading it. And I would like to just start to get back together and then decide, do we want a terms of reference or does everybody want the terms of reference, not what we're, I think we're leading the cart before the horse. And this is the second step maybe, but the first step is just to get back. Um, I don't, so this doesn't change it for me. I would be in, in I'm not in support of either. I'm, I'm with Director Allo on this. Director uh, uh, Fall. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so I'm speaking just to the amendment, which is asking, you know, for adding the words collaboration, the unit, if I'm against the whole. And actually, I'm against the amendment even in the context of the whole, because what we're actually asking, what the amendment is asking, is that we're asking the Talatman to work on our terms of reference. The, the, the terms of reference would be QRD terms of reference for a QRD select committee, or asking them to work on terms of reference. So, I mean, I just think that if we're going to reinstate three C3s, if the first communication from the this board is to reach out to them and say, hey, will you reach work on some terms of reference for a committee that we've already kind of put in motion to do before we're even talking with you? And I, I you know, and, and I think that's a problem. And I, I, you know, I understand the comments from Director Gisborne that maybe we have a C3 meeting first. That's exactly what I'm proposing and that we wouldn't, you know, that this whole motion should be put aside for now because we don't know what the outcome of that meeting would be. And to try to uh, do something that, that now entwines them in and it's actually asking them to to provide input into a, a terms of reference of a QRD committee I think may rub the Tlatman really the wrong way. Um, I, I don't see that as being a positive step forward. So I think that doesn't help the resolution. I think the amendment um, makes it worse. So I'm gonna call the question on the amendment. All in favor? Those opposed? It's uh, two in favor, four, one, two, three, four, five opposed. So it does not carry. Um, that brings us back to the main motion on the floor. Um, all in favor? I just got one question. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I hear Director Fall on the discussing the amendment that maybe we should reach out and meet with Plum and Nation and then take a look at the, uh, the select committee proposal. So I'm wondering if rather than defeating the motion, we either postpone it or potentially forward it to the C3. Because if we vote it down, what we're saying is we're not doing it because that's how the board speaks by resolution. So for though I'm happy with the motion and voting in favor of it, but if anyone is wanting to reconsider it at a later time, I would suggest that they vote uh, or move postponement until after we have a C3. I think we should simply defeat the motion that's on the floor, and if we do, I will make another motion. Am I hearing anybody else who is interested in postponing the motion? If not, we'll just call the question. I'm not seeing that, so I'm going to call the question. All in favor of the main motion? Uh, one in favor, Director Gisburn. All uh, opposed? The remainder of that number is <laughs> Um, Director Doubt. All right. I move that the committee recommends to the board that the board reinstate community to community forums in collaboration with the Tlama Nation and the City of Fall River. Was that community to community or community to community to community? <laughs> Are you talking C2 or C3? C3. Oh. Community to community to community. Just trying to help out here. <laughs> the first uh, several words of the motion that was in. So it's going to come up on the on the board because we didn't have it in the published agenda. If there's a second here, I'll speak to. It. Is that correct? Uh, seconded by uh, Director Hollow. So the motion is properly on the floor. Uh, go ahead, Director Doubt. So I think. I heard everybody in the room agree that this is what they want to do. 
Right. There are different details. There are different ways people would like to proceed. There are different impressions of the meetings. And I think I heard everybody around the table say, it's important to reach out to the other parties to this group to have a discussion to begin it. My preference would be that we find a way with those partners to have open meetings that have an ability to have the meeting in a closed session for a number of different reasons. I've outlined those before, but we don't need to dig into the details of it to get our fingers dirty with every every word and every phrase and make sure it's all as correct as it could possibly be because none of it is of any value until the other two parties agree. So it is a straightforward, simple, it's reaching out to the Tlamath Nation and as well as the city of Fall River saying, let's get together and do this. It's a valuable thing. Let's find a way to get it done. Can I just, through the chair, confirm that this is the motion? I've had a few sent to me, so. The committee recommends to the board that the board reinstate community. Uh, I, I'm just going to make an amendment, if that's okay. Yes, just. To the board that we reinstate community to community to community forums in collaboration with the Klamath Nation and the city of Fall River. Board, that just we, yeah. Simply to remove yeah. the idea that we are demanding anything of anybody. Okay, so this is, it went away. Oh, sorry, um, <laughs> it's just, it sometimes um, prevents people from being able to see the group. So I try not to. Okay, so this is the motion on the floor. Hopefully we'll get it back. Um, I have Director Lennox and then Director Fall. Yeah, I think, again, we're all aiming at the same target here. Um, this, the staff report was very fulsome and educates us as to, you know, the parameters that we under. We have facilitators available from the province that understand the parties, uh, all three parties, and, and uh, can really help us to facilitate this. And the guide here to on community to community forums is exactly what we've been talking about start start with the discussion and move ahead right with with uh, an open mind so i support this motion okay. thank you chair i just want to be brief and it's just, I, I really support this and it's just we're taking a baby first step to restart the c3s and we're just saying we want to reinstate it and then now it'll go over to the Tlatman and the city of Powell River, our partners in this. And then that'll give them an opportunity to say either that'd be a great idea or not, or we want changes. It doesn't presuppose anything. It just says, we want to do this. And uh, what do you think? So I think this is the right first step and I totally support it. Yeah. Uh, Director Gisborne. Yes. I fully support meeting with Tlatman. I just want to make something clear though. But if we're having a community to community to community forum, then that is not a meeting. And therefore, the closed session legislation doesn't actually apply. So if a member of our board or a member of city council then discloses what was talked about with the press or members of the public, then it's just a forum. It's not an actual meeting that's gone into closed session. And I just hope that uh, everyone's aware of that, including Tuama Nation, that when we're having a, a discussion with the, the forum, that there really isn't any guarantee that what is discussed will actually stay private. And that's what has me very concerned because well, we have a, a, not really a meeting, but a forum discussion. And you know how this town is, you say one thing and then it becomes a game of telephone and there's no actual record of what was actually discussed and things very quickly can get taken out of context. So I believe that we need to be working with Lama Nation and City of Powell River, but we also need to be able to have some kind of mechanism that when things do get taken out of context, that we as a collective group, all three local, all three local community entities 
we come together and stand up for each other and say, hold on, what you're reporting or what is being said isn't accurate. It's not what was actually discussed. So I'm okay with this as it is, but I do have concerns about um, future damage to the relationship because the community to community to community forums as we had it, which is a, what we're looking to go back towards, when we did them, there was damage to the relationship. And I'm worried about repeating the same mistake. But I'll support the resolution now. I just want us all to be very careful. Um, any other thoughts, comments? Um, yeah. Thanks, through the chair. I think everybody wants to, as Director Lennox said, hit the target. And it's going to be difficult. But we have to take these baby steps. And I think one of the biggest things is going to be the fact that, and this may sound oxymoronic or a contradiction of terms, but you're all elected officials. You're all politicians. And you know what they say about politicians. However, I believe that the credibility of this C3 being successful will reside and rest in the individual ethics and the individual integrity of each person who attends those forums. Thank you. I have a question. All right. Director. Yes, please. Thank you, Chair. The motion is that the board, the board, recommends to the board that we reinstate community to community to community forums. That's implying that we, like the board decided not to do C3 and that we're reinstating it. But as I understand it, we never, the board never passed a motion saying that we're not doing C3s anymore. So is this motion even necessary? And can't we just carry on with the C3s as we have been? That's, that's my question, because the resolution is that we reinstate it. When did we stop officially? Through the yeah. chair. I think it may just be semantics, but I think the point is, is that we have been stalled and on such a long hiatus and I think everybody understands what the intention is with that motion. Thank you. So um, whether we made a decision to stop them or not, it's been quite well, well over a year, almost two years now since we've had three <laughs> meetings. So whether there was an intention to stop them or not, they, they have stopped. So I like the motion. I'm in, I'm I'm going to be voting in favor of it. Uh, if we don't have any more comments, we'll just call the question. Uh, all in favor? Anyone opposed? None opposed. Uh, that would be unanimous. So there was a second motion in our package that uh, if anyone would like to read that motion. Uh, the committee recommends to the board that the Catholic Regional District. Write a letter to the Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation and the Minister of Municipal Affairs urging that they amend text in the community charter to enable local governments to have private forums with First Nations. Second. Second. Uh, we got Dr. Director Fall this time. Um, so the motion's properly on the floor. Uh, would you like to speak to that, Director Brandon? I just think it's the right next step to take. Um, I'm as has been mentioned earlier in the meeting, it's obviously a topic that has come up on in numerous forums. I imagine we're not the first people that are going to be sending letters to these bodies. So but I think it's a good thing we should do. Thank you. Director Fall and then out. Thank you. I just briefly, I think I, and I, I concur with the comments by Director Brander. The, this, the forum at AVICC, had, uh, the Reconciliation Forum, you know, with with two First Nations and and someone from the government, they recognize they heard this. This this is something they're well aware of. They just need to be hearing it loud and clear from as many local governments as possible, so that they actually can motivate the uh, 
the politician or the cabinet to take action and make the what what appears to be a pretty minor textual change but of course it sounds easy till you go through the process but just they hear from a lot and then the province can make the change to solve this situation thank you director Dunn. Oh. yeah and i've i've been to all these conventions that everybody else has been to and i've i've listened to the discussions about d3s and c2s and intergovernmental meetings and as far as I'm concerned, we are leagues ahead of other municipalities in doing what we've been doing. We've been having these C3 meetings here for many, many years, probably over 15 years that they've been going on between the city and the regional district and the Klamath Nation. And we've accomplished a lot of things to the point where we are, have been able to do some things together. And I think we would like to do more things together you don't simply, I don't think, want to get together and have a nice chat and share a sandwich. I think we maybe want to get together and talk about ways to move forward our communities together in coalition strength. And I think having the Municipal Act amended in any way or the Community Charter amended in any way to make that work is good. But I think if we intend to bring our communities along with the leaders of the community, we need to have an option to have those things in public, except where it's necessary and the group finds it necessary to enter into a closed meeting. I've suggested ways to enter into a closed meeting in terms of reference attached to a C3 meeting, like section 90 of the community charter or other to protect from any disclosure of harmful to the interest of indigenous people in those terms of reference. I think we should do that. I think we want to keep it open to actually do things in that meeting rather than or in that forum or in that gathering rather than simply get together and talk to each other about, about things that don't turn into reality. So in, in order to turn it into reality, my view is we have to bring along our publics that are involved with local government. Um, but I'm in favor of the motion. Director Gisborne. Thank you. I completely concur with what Director Doubt just said. What has me concerned is when we're moving forward together, moving forward on initiatives, we're coming together and having a forum, but that's the issue. If we have quorum and we're moving forward in the decision-making process, but we're not having a official meeting, the ombudsperson might think that we're having a meeting. Not, we haven't passed any motions, but we might be perceived as moving along something that can become an official decision. This motion in front of us is asking for the province to change the legislation so that we can have the option to go into a closed session to then meet with Roman Nation and other Treaty First Nations. But if we're not even having a meeting then if they change the legislation, it doesn't really doesn't really change what we're doing because our C3 forums aren't a meeting. And that's where, you know, it, if we want to ask the province, can you change the legislation so that we can go into closed session to discuss these issues with two First Nations, which I think that's the direction the province is going. But if we're not willing to have an actual committee established or an official meeting established, and it's just a forum, well, we can't be having a forum and then, okay, I move that we're gonna go into closed session under this new piece of legislation because we're not having a meeting, it's just a forum. So I'm in favor of the motion, but it's just based on the discussion and the motions that have been passed, I'm just a little confused on what is the direction that we as an organization are, are doing. And one of the things that is always kind of bothered me about reconciliation at the board is we talk a lot about you know things that affect Tuama Nation well, there's no one from Tuama Nation here and it always makes me a little uncomfortable when you know, might speak to what their stances are or their opinion are because I 
their stance and their opinions and their objectives are completely theirs. I won't speak for Tuolumne Nation, and I would very much like to hear what they have to say. But this, I think, would just open the opportunity, ask the province, can you do it? So I guess I'm in support of this motion. Um, so I'm in for, support of this motion. I'm also in support of us going a one step farther and following up with a resolution to UBCM. Um, the legislation as it's currently written provides uh, protection and the ability to go in camera for other levels of government and then it lists the levels of government and misses First Nations. So it does not treat First Nations in our legislation as a level of government and that needs to be corrected. Whether whether that helps our C3 form or not is beside the point. Um, part of it is trying to decide whose meeting is it. And we're trying to do a, a C3 forum where it's not any one of our meetings, it's a gathering where we all show up. And I think we could create some policy around our own participation in that. Um, all of that doesn't negate the fact that our legislation right now through the charter does not treat First Nations as a level of government and it, and it should. And so I'm in support of the motion. Um, any other, uh, all in favor? Any opposed? None opposed, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to make a separate motion to write the ABC? Certainly. Can I do that as a chair? Uh, I'd like to move that the committee recommend to the board that uh, we ask staff to form a resolution to UBCM. Is that how it's done? Uh, that asks for uh, the charter be amended to protect or to treat First Nations as a level of government. And or whatever word that works best for that. Um, should we put it up or is it clear and small enough that we don't need to? Haven't taped it out yet. I think it's... Can I get a second there? Is that what you're doing? Oh, I'm not going to second. Thank you. Director Hollow, seconded the motion. Uh, you would like to speak to it? Yeah. This is a trap that we're, I, I don't want to step into. Yeah. The First Nation is not a level of government under the Municipal Act. They're an independent nation with the relationship, particularly the Kalama nation, the treaty nation, is an independent nation. It is not a municipal government. I don't think, I don't think, talk about speaking for people that aren't in the room, I don't think the Kalama nation wants to be considered as a municipal government. I do not think they do. They so I just want to add government. some clarity. That's what the motion says. No, it doesn't. The level of so the charter spells out when municipal governments are dealing with the federal government, the provincial government. They have certain provisions, and it's and it says other. I'm not exactly the wording, but it's yeah, I was getting it. Dealing with other levels of government, and then it spells out what those other levels of government are, and it just simply misses First Nations. Yeah. If I may, chair. The community charter says uh, the consideration of information received and held in confidence relating to negotiations between the municipality and a provincial government or the federal government or both or between a provincial government or the federal government or both and a third party. And I think the intent of uh, what uh, the chair of the community the whole right now is suggesting is, is that somehow First Nations be inserted into that section so that that would also be included as they are rightfully, as you have pointed out, Director Doubt, a nation, just like the provincial government is some type of other authority, as well as the federal government being another authority. Yes, that is the intention of what I was trying to make. Thank you, yeah. Director Brandon. Uh, thanks, Chair. I was just wondering if you'd be open to the suggestion of just declaring a notice of motion at this point, and therefore you can bring it to the next committee the whole meeting with it crafted properly so that we know exactly what we're voting on. I don't see this as a time sensitive issue. It's just about getting it onto the floor of the UBCM, which is quite a ways away. Right, Chairman. 
Well, Director Hollow, I think, beat me to it. No, I don't think I've ever seen Yeah, um, I'd like to thank the CIO for um, specifying the uh, community charter line. I know I've read it a number of times, uh, section 92B, and you know, trying to add Treaty First Nation into 2B might make that thing crazy wordy because it's like all of them. And I would almost suggest that it becomes its own section, which would read the consideration of information received and held in confidence relating to negotiations between the municipality and a Treaty First Nation or the Treaty First Nation and a third party. Uh, that's that's what I would suggest the legislation be amended to, but I'm not at the provincial level. I'm just an electoral area director sitting in the corner. So, uh, but that would be up for UBCM, and I think Director Brander's um, request of it being a notice of motion might uh, might work. I think the deadline is what July for UBCM. June something to have it to UBCM, is it? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. The June is when the report comes forward where the board can consider registration and any resolution. So that can be scheduled to come forward next month. And I believe July is the deadline. Uh, June 30th. Oh, yes. So we heard sure. fall. Thank you. Director Fall. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I was just going to say it's June 30th. So just try to do the calendar. Um, I, I support the idea of a notice of motion because, you know, I, I do think a UBCM resolution would be great. I think crafting it, even a, a trying to get the wording exactly for what we're asking staff. But on the other hand, we don't want to get a staff report and then have it delayed. So if, if it's possible that the, the I mean, if, if you do choose to go with a notice of motion today, maybe to go to the board meeting, if that would be uh, possible. Is that, is that something, I don't know if, uh, if that's a possibility because then the, the motion to ask staff to do something about the resolution would be could be considered at the, the the May board meeting. Then the report from staff on it would come at the June committee of the whole meeting, and then the board could chew on it, send it to the June board meeting, and then adopt it, and then it could get put in on the June the thirtieth. So I just I just want to make sure we don't do something and then cause it to you know go off the rails. Um, do we have comment around? Processing deadlines and so forth. I mean, I, mean, um, I, I would just caution decisions made at the board be included on the committee agenda because they get published. The, the board meeting occurs the day that the committee agendas get published. However, um, the UBCM report comes forward in June and it solicits um, resolutions to be submitted. Um, typically, because that's when all of the information is released. Uh, so we could, I don't know that staff would be able to craft it and turn it around, but we could have a, one crafted for consideration in June. I think that would work, if that makes sense. Director Doe. Yeah, I think we could spend a long time talking about this, uh, but I understand that members can support motions in writing to the board. You don't have to provide a notice of motion. I don't think there's any requirement in the procedure act that we do that. If uh, Director Elliot wants to wants to make a motion, she could take the time to consider the motion, write it out and present it at the board meeting. I think that's a simple operation. Okay. Um, I like this motion, but I'm not necessarily sure if it's appropriate. And the reason for it is because that regional district is a member of the UBCM. So yes, we can put forward a motion to the UBCM membership. But Plumman Nation, after 2021, is also a member of UBCM. I'm wondering if maybe Tuama Nation would be interested in putting forward this motion. And I know in the past, sometimes the city has contacted the regional district for support of a resolution the city is putting forward. And I'm wondering if maybe this kind of resolution to UBCM could be something that is jointly supported by all three entities. So 
this kind of goes back to that, well, should the regional district be the one taking the charge and making the changes without Plumman being involved? And this is where I think that Plumman Nation is a member of EBCM, they can put forward the motion as well. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this because we're talking about asking the province to change legislation that would affect and impact Treaty First Nations. And there is no Treaty First Nation at this table today. So I am, sorry, I'm just gonna take this moment to talk. Um, I would like the board to consider before it's too late, um, the idea of supporting a resolution before UBCM that uh, asks for changes in legislation to include First Nations in in the community charter as per we spelled out earlier. I'm okay with doing notice of motion and doing it later, but not if it makes it so we can't meet deadlines. Um, I think that we can, as politicians, ask for support from other areas as well. And this resolution is not about Klahoma Nation. This is about the legislation that we all operate under and how it, it misses our stations as a respected level of government in our legislation. And it's, in my opinion, reconciliation where we find these things and change them so that they're more inclusive of all First Nations. So um, I'm not, that's what I would like. I would like to see this board consider this this motion and to see whether we support putting this resolution forward or not. And I'd like to do it in a way that gets it before this UBCM if we could. Um, so however that happens, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a notice of motion or we call the question here or we call it next board meeting or we put it on the, on the agenda as part of the package that's coming forward to the next committee of the whole for UBCM. All of those things work for me. So, Thanks, Chair. I, I just wanna say I agree with Director Dowd that um, you don't need to notice a motion if you just wanna take a little bit of time to craft something for the board meeting. We placed, we can bring it forward there. Okay. Uh, so we could postpone this motion or withdraw it and bring it forward at the next meeting if that's the suggestion. That doesn't bother me at all. What are you suggesting we postpone? Well, we did have a motion, but you're suggesting I recraft it better and put it on an agenda, I guess, right? Um, Maybe it'd be easier just to say you're going to bring it forward at a future meeting. Okay, I'll withdraw the motion and I'll bring it forward. Technically you can't because it's already on the floor. Does every, I would just say, does everybody agree? Do I have unanimous support to withdraw the motion off of the floor? I'll support. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and that was the right way. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our agenda. And uh, Unless anyone has any, should I ask for questions again, given that we had another conversation? No? Yeah, it's not on the agenda, if everybody agrees. Well, I just don't know what to do because we had more conversation. Uh, so, sorry, if, if we don't have to, then we can Yes. I don't even the press is here, are we? I don't know. Is anyone here? Oh, you're not. Oh, good. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. Oh, Sandy's starting to email. Yeah. Back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it.